output tables, since you had that introductory video, you should be familiar with input output tables, what they look like. And I want you to pause it for a second so you can go run and grab some toothpicks or other short straight items could be popsicle sticks. So pause it, go run and grab what you need to build some triangles with me. All right, glad you're back. You're gonna need paper pencil as well. So if you need to pause again and get paper pencil, please do that. Let's start by building one triangle with our toothpicks. And I want you to tell me how many toothpicks it took to build that one triangle. Well, of course it took three. Now we're gonna look at if we built a second triangle, not attached in any way, just off to the side here, how many toothpicks would it take to build two triangles? Well, yeah, that's easy, right? It took six toothpicks to build these two triangles. Go ahead and build a third triangle with your toothpicks. And I know what you're saying. Yeah, it takes nine toothpicks. I have a little crease in my paper so my toothpick keeps, keeps rolling. But yeah, it takes nine toothpicks to build three triangles. But what if I asked you, how many toothpicks will it take to build 150 triangles? 150 triangles, do you have enough toothpicks? I don't, I definitely don't. I would clear out my stash completely if I had to build 150 triangles. So we are gonna use an input output table to figure this out. If we had 150 triangles to build, I'm gonna clear the decks here. And if you have a copy of notes, great, or you can write down your notes on scratch paper or in your spiral, in your notebook. But we've already answered a few of these questions. How many toothpicks would it take to build one triangle? Of course, it took us three. How many toothpicks would it take to build two separate triangles? Six. And then three separate triangles, of course, that was nine. So this is our input output table with the information. We have the number of triangles as our input, the output is the number of toothpicks. Well, we know that one triangle took three toothpicks to make, two triangles took six, three triangles took nine, and here I see students that'll just write 12 because they say, oh, three, six, nine, 12, but that is not what's happening because the distance between these numbers is not equivalent when you get down to 150. So if that's the case, we have to come up with a rule or a function in order to figure out how many toothpicks it takes. So what they want us to do is create a table to show the relationship between the number of triangles and the number of toothpicks. I know what you're saying. We're multiplying by three, right? Well, yeah, you're multiplying by three, but I want you to use a variable. We're using the letter N in here to write a rule or function. So N is representing the number of triangles. So you couldn't just say times three. We're gonna have to say the letter N, whatever this number is, times three. That's gonna equal your output. Better than that, a more fifth grade version would be rather than having that time sign, which definitely looks like an X to me, we're gonna write three N, okay? 3n. And you remember when you have a letter and a number or a variable, an unknown and a, a number right beside each other like that, we use the phrase no sign by, you multiply. So for some reason, when you get to fifth grade, they just quit including time signs. Why? Because they look like x's. So if we have 3n and we try to write the number first, when we do this, we write the number and then the variable. That is the same thing as saying n times three or three times n. So no sign by you multiply. So our rule or function here is three n. That's the rule. Okay, that's the fifth grade way of writing it. So what you're going to do, of course, is just plug in this number for n. It's kind of like a secret code. So if the rule is three n and we have two triangles, that's the same thing as three times two. And again, I'm putting a dot instead of time sign because we try to stay away from time signs because they look like X. And of course that equals six. For the next one, it was still three N. That's the same thing as writing three times three in this case, as our N was a three this time. And yeah, that equals nine. So for the last one here, three N, 
is going to be equal to three times the N is changed to 150. Three times 150. Wow, I did not have enough toothpicks for this. Three times 150, you can do the math out to the side, but that equals 450 toothpicks that we would have had to have in order to show 150 triangles. We need three times the number of triangles to equal the number of toothpicks. So what is the rule or function for this pattern? You must use a variable. The rule is just 3n. You may even see it written like 3n equals an output. They might even give the output a letter and maybe make this something like for a P for picks. Okay, if that's the case, you may see something written like 3n equals P. And remember, no sign by means you multiply. So 3n is multiplication. If someone put three times n equals p or n times three equals p, it wouldn't necessarily be wrong. It's just not the most mature this grade way of writing that we mean multiplication. All right, let's look at a couple more examples. These are involving input output tables that are already made. So you might want to write these down or take some notes if you have a copy of these. And we're going to fill in the empty boxes here. This is pretty easy. They give us the input. They tell us the rule in very basic terms, subtract five, and we go find the output. So all we have to do on this is to subtract five from each of our input amounts. Okay, you could write them in, you could write them on paper, but you're subtracting five each time. So of course our output 10 minus five is five. 16 minus five is 11. 17 minus five is 12 and 18 minus five is 13. Notice the pattern, there's not a pattern going vertically because the numbers, the distance between 10 and 16, 17, 18, it's not all equal. So don't look for a pattern that way. You're going from input to output. The next one's a good example because it's written horizontally. And so our input is going from top to bottom. We're not looking for a pattern going this direction. We're looking for a pattern going up and down from input to output. The rule here is to subtract four, same thing. You're just subtracting four from each of your input values, subtract four. So seven minus four, of course, is three. 11 minus four would give us seven. 17 minus four, 13. 19 minus four, 15. Let's do a little bit tougher example down here. They give you the input output. Now they give you the input, part of the output's missing, but we have to find the rule for this one. They want you to have Q represent your input. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a Q above input. You could even fit it in the little box there, but we're trying to figure out what happened to our input value to give us our output. Well, I see six went to nine, it got bigger. The number six got bigger when it became nine two ways we make bigger numbers. We make bigger numbers by multiplying or adding. Oh, I've got a big pin link there. Multiplying or adding. So I don't think I can multiply six by a whole number to get nine, but I could add something to get nine. What could I add to get nine there? Hmm. Plus three? Just because it works on this one doesn't mean it's gonna work every time. We have to try it with every number. Is nine plus three going to give us 12? Why, well, yes, it is. 10 plus three, is that gonna give us 13? It is, I think we've discovered our rule. Our rule is we take the letter Q, whatever the case may be, whatever the value is, plus three, and that's gonna give us our output. So let's go back to the missing number here. One, which is Q, plus three, would give us an output value of, of course, four. All right, again, don't try to find a pattern in your outputs because if your inputs aren't separated by the same distance, they don't have the same separation, then these are not gonna match up. So we are going from input to output to find our rule. All right, now that we've looked at a couple of few easier examples, let's look at one involving a word problem. This one's pretty simple too, but we're gonna have to fill this chart out. Says Grace earns $8 for every handmade cup she sells. Fill out the function table if she sells five, six, and 20 cups. Use G for the input variable and a dollar sign for the output variable. Write the ruler function in the blank below the table. 
lots of information here. Okay, eight dollars for every. For every is a good indicator that we're probably going to do some multiplication in a second. Write the word multiplication. And handmade cups, I'm thinking like those Yetis with the glitter and the resin on them. Fill out the function table if she sells five, six, and 20 cups. We have to use G for our input variable, and we're going to use a dollar sign for our output variable. And then we have to write the uh, rule or function in the blank below the table. So if you need to copy this chart down for just a minute, you can pause it. But our input variable was given to us. It's the letter G. The output variable was also given to us. It's a dollar sign. Notice I have two lines in my dollar sign. If you have one, it's called a peso, okay? All right, so our input variable is G. Did it give us the inputs here? Yeah, let's see, she sells five, six, and 20 cups. Those are our input variables, five, six, and 20. We also have to look in the question to see what do they want us to do with five, six, and 20? Well, it's eight, dollars for every handmade cup she sells. So that means that we need to multiply each of these values by eight, okay? We're multiplying by eight because it's $8 for every, multiplying by eight, $8 for every. And then of course, we'll just go find our output variable or our output here. Five times eight, of course, she earned $40 on five cups. She earned six times eight here would be $48 for six cups. And then 20 times eight, we know two times eight is 16. And we just put that zero on the back. So she earned $160 for 20 cups. All right, now our ruler function. Remember our ruler function, we have to be fifth graders and we're gonna write it correctly. We are taking G and we have to multiply G by eight to get our dollar amount. Now, um, one way to write that, of course, would be G times eight equals dollar sign. But we're fifth graders. We're not going to write it that way. We know no sign by means you multiply. So a better way to write that would be eight G equals dollar sign, eight G. Okay. And we want to always put the number before the variable when we're doing it this way. All right. Look at one more example before I let you go today. This is one where we have the input given to us. The rule is right here at the top or the function and the output is Y. So all we're going to do for this is we're gonna sub out RB for whatever our input is. So in this case, our input's 14. 14 minus six equals Y. For the next one, B is now 15. So we're gonna write 15 minus six equals Y. 16 minus six equals Y. It's kind of like a code. We're cracking the code right now where B is equal to that input value. And then 25 is B in the last one here. 25 minus six equals Y. And then all we have left to do is to actually solve it. So our output on this one, 14 minus six would be eight. 15 minus six would be nine. 16 minus six would be 10. And don't make that mistake where you go and put 11 here because this pattern is persisting. You have to take a look at this value. 25 minus six is 19, a little bit different than 11. So that's what we do for input output tables. The next part will be when we have two step functions here at the top.